My love is everlasting, ever, ever, everlasting to everlasting. Hello guys, welcome to Boxing Block Center, the home of African boxing. And please, if you're new to this channel, make sure you click the like and of course the subscribe button right now. Let's go to the notification bell icon, click it and select all. So I'm not you a new exclusive video, you will definitely be notified. So Dana White has finally reacted to Francis Ngano getting demolished by the two-term unified working of the universe, Anthony Joshua. Dana White is a very, I don't, listen, I like Dana White uh, because he's a very smart uh, businessman, of course, you know, but let's not forget how Dana, Dana White, Dana White exploits his UFC is fighters in the UFC pay them pennies. These guys put their life on the line. I don't really respect this man like that like anymore, like I used to. I have huge admiration for him as a businessman, but as a person, I don't think this guy has this guy has any empathy or sympathy for any of his fighters. He just see them as you know as um uh cash cows and you know cows he can he can milk from it's just one of those things let's of course hear what he had to say regarding the fight he said if fury trained for the fight and didn't show up and look like he hate tyson fury that's probably the way that fight would have ended too it's all funny saying this now what do you mean what did i make yeah, what did i make listen let's you just got to just hear him say this did you uh, see the match, the boxing match last night? Did you talk to Eddie after it? I did not. Um, I, I mean, I saw it on, I saw it on social media. Yeah. What did you make of that finish in the Francis fight? What do you mean? What did I make? Yeah, <laughs> what did like, I make like, of it? What you saw, like it was, it was, it was. People are saying it's one of the more violent knockouts in boxing history. Yeah. I mean, going into the Fury fight, if Fury trained for the fight and didn't show up, and you know. Look like he ate Tyson Fury. That's probably the way that fight would have ended too. I mean, listen, the crossover. You know how I feel about crossovers into boxing, and that's that's how they end, just like that. Well, you can hear Dana White. Listen, Dana White has no. Listen, Ongano is a winner in life. Is a winner. Ongano won the battle against Dana White. Ungano won the battle against Dana White. <laughs> Saying that if Tyson Fury didn't come up or didn't come up, look like he hate Tyson Fury. Does that listen? Not that the fight with Tyson Fury is a different kind of was a different kind of fight. Francis Francis Ungano earned about twenty million dollars. He won. L listen. Throughout his whole UFC career, he spent like seven years in UFC. He didn't even make up to 14 million. He didn't make not his last fight in UFC. He got paid pennies. So it wasn't on six hundred thousand dollars, and then he had to borrow two hundred thousand dollars from Kamara Usman. Then Awad has has no moral ground to speak on Ngano, who is a who is a winner in life, a warrior, a well respected guy. That a white is just bitter. Francis made 30 million in two boxing matches. So he made more than all the champs in the UFC who earned this year. Facts. So um first of all, let's keep it real. Tyson Fury is not is not a naturally gifted puncher like Anthony Joshua. They're not the same fighter. Joshua is a beast of a man. Joshua is a beast of a man. Tyson Fury can't drop you with one punch. It can't. It takes him like a couple of like he takes him time to do that. He he, he papas you with a jab. He, he has to beat you down first before he's able to knock you out. 
Joshua don't have to do that. Joshua can literally land three punches, and those three punches will knock you the fuck out. Facts. In the Ghana fight, Joshua landed. I think if I to count it, I think he landed four times. Two times Ghana got dropped. Um, and the third, the third odd punch that he landed, but basically that was the finishing uh, punch that knocked Ngano out cold. So the first one he landed was, I mean, the first one of course he dropped Ngano with a straight right hand, but there was when he, he jumped on Ngano after Ngano, like after I think it was the first round. He jumped on the gunner, but seeing the gunner was still very much there because the gunner wasn't faced then. So Joshua took his time not to for for him not to be like the Andrews Junior like a fight again, all over again. You know what I mean? So um, I'm proud of Francis Gunner. He's an inspiration. He's a guy that inspires, um, that will inspire a lot of African fighters. Um, fighters from his um, his um, his country, Cameroon, not to give up on their dreams, and not to belittle themselves. Imagine if Francis Gano had stayed with UFC, for example, and maybe get beat by, let's say, uh, John Jones, make less money. I know the UFC losses does really count like that, but. There is no way John Jones is making the money France are gonna make in in five fights in UFC. Facts. That's all facts. So I'm proud of Ngano. Even though he talked too much, I think he began to talk too much. The confidence he got in the and in the, in the Fury fight was like immersed. You know, he talked too much. His trainer, I think, is a uh, was let me. I always forget his name. Cooney or something. That guy talked gonna hop too like he talked and gonna hop like crazy i know you have to hype your, hype your hype your fighter but saying joshua has nothing that gonna doesn't have that um uh gonna's fist is gonna ram through under joshua i want to see an interview of that trainer i think i have actually do something with it i think he does he's too embarrassed to to even do that anyway so dana white is a no more ground to talk down on Francis Ngano. Francis Ngano is a winner in life. He's basically made forever. Okay. Coming from where he came from, the man came from from absolutely nothing. I mean nothing, nada. And for him to be in the position that he is. And I still I don't think Ngano's boxing career is over. It's not over at all. Ngano Boston's career boxing career is not over. Ngano, in my opinion, if I were to be in Ghana, I would pursue the Deontay Water fight. A dangerous fight, but a fight that both fighters can win. He can win the fight. Water can also win the fight. Water can lay him out like Joshua did. But he can also lay water out. You know, and both coming off from coming off uh, losses, that would be nice. I'll be that would be an, an, a knockout. Uh, someone must get knocked out in that in that fight. So, because water is not the same water. Like uh, like it doesn't it doesn't bust anymore. He relies on that punch, and Gano probably will implement something different to bully water because it will be it will be a twin water by like listen. What always come around 220, right? Bro, it will be, be at twin water by 40 pounds. Bro. Like, 50 pounds, but 50 pounds. That's crazy. So, if really lean on water, use his weight. If I were to be in Ghana, if I was going to, I wouldn't, I would retire, I would keep boxing. And God, the fundamentals is there. He made a very big mistake in trying to like, um, Tom Southport against Anthony Joshua. Listen, Joshua fought the best Southport in the world as Usyk. So, and Ungano is not even close to that. He's still an amateur, basically a novice in the boxing world. But he did 
did his own thing against Fury. That fight is not a fluke. Ogano just had a a, 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 a a element of surprise. And if he work, if Ogano works on his craft, <clears throat> Ogano also had the belief that his chin was unbreakable. That also cost him big time because no chin is invisible. I always say Ogano's a strong man, but a chin. If you get hit by Anthony Joshua, no matter how strong your chin is, you're going to feel it. It's f facts. No matter how strong of a chin you have, you are going to feel it. You're going to go down or wobble. And that's what happened. Big of Sungano, I hope he comes back. And um, I hope he doesn't give up on boxing. Because I think Ngano, with, with Ngano naming, uh, naming the miss, like it would be nice. You know, boxing is where the money is. That's why a lot of people would like they, 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 some UFC fight fans are saying, "Yeah, why don't boxers go to UFC to go make peanuts?" I mean, you you think Joshua would go to UFC and make two, two, 10 million when he makes double that or triple that in boxing? Go to MMA and uh, uh, octagon and make uh, uh, uh MMA and make uh, 10, 5 million? Like. You know why can't we pay? can we pay Joshua? Cause the guy is a greedy, is a greedy, greedy man. Greedy man, explodes his fighters, all, always find a way. Are you just crazy, man? It's very interesting. So guys, on like the video, share, subscribe. What do you make of Dana White? Dana White's um statement regarding Ngano? I'm not a big. I'm not a. Listen, I I'm a big Ngono fan. I'm not a big fan of his uh, trash talk when he tried to like challenge Joshua, talking smack and stuff like that. Nah, it, that's why Joshua had to humble him. You know, he didn't respect Joshua. You can tell he respected um, Fury more, but now he knows the real deal. Joshua knocked him the spark out. That's how he do it as a two-time unified world champ of the world that he is. God bless you guys. Stay with me right here. And uh, take care. Girl, I want to touch you. Uh -huh. Want me, could you solve you?